Hey, it's Alex from Board Game Co, and it's time for another Why I Backed It, or sometimes it'll be called Why I Didn't Back It, but, but this time I backed it, so it's Why I Backed It. Now, this is basically similar to the Should You Back It series of Kickstarter videos, except instead of an active Kickstarter, it's a Kickstarter that's no longer available. But the good news, and the reason I'm doing this video today, is because unlike Bloodborne, which I did last week, Alter Quest is a game where you can currently late pledge. In fact, I'm going to jump straight to that first, because... What if, you know, well, you actually have some time, so it's not that much of a rush. But you have until July 22nd. Now, don't be fooled. And I'll go into the game in a second, but I want to cover this first and get it out of the way. You have until July 22nd, but don't actually go to Alter Quest and try to late back there. You will be unable to. And additionally, you don't have access to the same amount of content, the same selections you had in Alter Quest. A lot of the production stuff is already being worked on, is already done, and they don't have the bandwidth to open up everything entirely. But... If you go to their miniature fantasy, fantasy, their miniature fantasy series and you go for the late pledge there, and I'll include a link down below so you have that, but until July 22nd, you'll be able to upgrade and or add things from Alter Quest. Specifically, there's a bunch of stuff from the actual miniature series itself, but then down here, we got Alter Quest, Alter Quest Runes, Alter Quest First Four. They got a bunch of stuff, so if you want to get an Alter Quest, you can. So this is a why I backed it, but also a should you back it. Now with that out of the way, and again, I will link to that down below to make sure you don't miss that or to make sure you don't have to search for it or whatever, but Alter Quest. Alter Quest is by Blacklist Games by Adam and Brady Sadler, and it is their, I guess, their highest funded Kickstarter to date. They have done a bunch of Kickstarters. Most notably, they are known for Street Masters and Street Masters Aftershock. They are also known for Brook City, and then recently, most recently, they had Hour of Knee, which sadly wasn't as successful, but still funded and... Got a lot of good review, reviews from people who played it, so hopefully it is a good game, but we'll go into that later. Alter Quest. So, what's the deal with this? Should you back it? What's the gameplay like? Why did I back it? Will it hold its value? All the usual stuff. So to start with, I backed it, which I guess should be self-evident because I called this should, why I backed it. But ultimately, this is one that brought in $620,000, which is more than both their Street Masters game campaigns combined, their first and their second. And a big part of that is the name. Uh, Street Masters was a great game, highly acclaimed, people loved it. Brook City, while not nearly as w adopted or as universally adopted by people, did have generally positive reviews, generally good feedback using the same modular deck system. And overall, that already establishes a name and a trend. And again, Street Masters is loved, loved by a lot of people. The ratings on that game are insane. And so when you come out with a fantasy-themed game, and this is something the Sadlers have talked about. Is it Sadler? Sad? I think it's Sadler. Again, mispronouncing and stuff. The Sadlers, I believe, have talked about this and the fact that they have traditionally gone with themes that appeal to them on a personal level, which as creators is great. As creators, you want to be inspired. I mean, I do YouTube videos, and there's a lot of stuff that I could cover, but I want to cover the stuff that makes me happy. I want to cover the stuff that doesn't burn me out when I do daily videos. And that should be true for anyone in the industry. This industry is tough, regardless of whether you are designing games, publishing games, selling games, reviewing games, any part of the industry you're in, it's unlikely you're making the big bucks. And so you're, if you're going to slave away day in, day out, do something you love. That being said, they eventually did get around to a fantasy theme, and the Sailors have experience with fantasy themes that they've done in other games. They've done Warhammer Quest and Heroes of Terranoth, so they do have experience in that genre. This is hardly their first, you know, rodeo. But they eventually did this, and sure enough, the fantasy theme, combined with their, you know, I guess their reputation, combined with everything they've done till now, it made this their most successful Kickstarter. This is a throwback to HeroQuest, and if you look at the board, you can see why. And unlike many game systems that nowadays focus on that modular board, the modular board, the modular board again and again and again, they are not bothering to do that, which could be interesting. On the one hand, it makes setup a much easier experience. I mean, I love Cthulhu Death May Die, but I hate changing out those tiles every single scenario. Zombicide, same story. I love the game, hate the setup. This is one in which they are relying on their modular deck system to provide the variability that you want in a game. I don't care how a game is different, I just want to make sure that 5-6 plays in, assuming I give it 5-6 plays, which already is a good sign, but I want to make sure that 5-6 plays in, I'm not sitting there wondering, okay, I've done this before, What's new? I mean, I just got rid of a few games because they didn't provide a new and fresh experience every time I played it. I like modularity in gaming. I like something that makes the game feel like it's a new adventure, a new experience, a new system to beat every single time I play it. And this is giving you that, but it's not giving you through a board, it's giving you through a modular deck system, which I think is a huge pro if it works out well. On the one hand, it might make that board part a little stale. Over multiple plays, you might have kind of a predefined 
tactical approach you take to the board. On the other hand, the modular deck system means I don't know if that will happen. I don't know how stale the board can be if the game is constantly changing around the board. So we'll see how that goes out and again, makes the setup significantly easier. As far as the game, as far as what you're getting here, let's cover the pledge levels in basic. So for $109 is the basic pledge level, but then you also had all these expansions you can get. $109 is the basic quest tier, gives you four heroes, 45 minions, and by the way, now's a good time to cover the fact that their miniature quality was upped, meaning a lot of people liked Street Masters, a lot of people liked Brook City, the miniatures. I personally did not like the miniatures, I found them to be subpar. But the sculpts in Alter Quest, they upped it a level, and if you look at their, where is it over here? If you look at their sculpts, if you look at their updates, these are some actual sculpts from the game. This is a significant step up, in my opinion, from what Street Masters delivered. And Street Masters wasn't bad, it's just that they're constantly, every company is constantly upping their game in this space. And I felt that Street Masters was a great game with subpar minis. This, I can't speak for the game yet, I haven't played it, but the miniature production quality has definitely upped a notch. They look great, they look amazing, you can check out the updates, which by the way, if you're late pledging, this gives this gives you an edge over, you know, people like us who backed it, and, well, not total edge, because we had access to some of the additions you don't, but you do get to see more than we did. You already get to see a little bit more, which is a good step in the right direction for making that decision. This one looks pretty cool, I like it a lot. But anyways, going back to that, so three villains, 45, 45 minions, four heroes, a bunch of scenery. Again, going back to hero quests, games haven't really focused as heavily on that basic in-the-room scenery that goes on in a game. And they really did a throwback. If you haven't watched the, uh, the best thing about hero quest is, now for some of you, you think I'm weird and you have no clue what just happened, and others of you know exactly what I'm talking about, and you love that video, you know it. Anyways, I'll link to that for those who don't. But anyways, going from there, we have the altar, we have 10 dice, we have modular decks and cards, and I will say, they have the whole thing where you can buy extra dice. I hate when they do that. Give me enough dice to play the game, whatever. But overall, they had great artwork, great production quality, a, a system that has worked. The modular deck system has worked. It's not exactly the same game to game. It is, certainly has differences, things that stand out, things that make it unique in each game that they, uh, they, they bring it to. But they're bringing it to a genre that people like, a dungeon crawl, throwback to Hero Quest. And if that's not enough, we have the Call of the Lunarin, 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 Lunarin expansion, with which with guest designer Isaac Childress, who came, creator of Gloomhaven and I guess Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion and Frosthaven. This guy's just knocking these things out of the park. But he came in and guest designed an expansion with them, which already should tell you a lot about. I mean, don't get me wrong, I hear Isaac's a great guy in general, so you could just say he's doing everyone a favor and that's it, but I have to imagine he liked this game enough to be a part of it. I have to imagine, perhaps incorrectly, that this wasn't purely a favor, but rather this was, I like this, this is fun, let me be a part of it. I, I, I assume, maybe I'm wrong, maybe he's just far nicer than I give him credit for. But that being said, that should tell you a lot about the system already. Isaac Childress is involved. Don't get me wrong, the, Sa the Sailor Brothers have their, their chops, they have their experience, they have plenty of experience under their belt uh, as it is, this is just more. If you, just, if you were uncertain before, this is more of a testament as to the fact that this is probably a good system. Does not mean it's for you. Let's be very clear about that. But a good system nonetheless. From there we have the stretch goals. Now, I will say, I love this about the about the, about about Blacklist games. Whenever I talk about stretch goals, I constantly talk about how it's all a game. It's all fake. It's all eh. But I think Blacklist games is the exception to that. I could be wrong. I really do think they are the exception. And the reason for that is if you follow their campaigns, if you follow their stretch goals, they generally go with very consistent gaps and maybe late campaign, they'll space them out a drop. But they certainly are not a company that plays that game as soon as they see the funding heading one direction or the other, they adjust the gaps to some crazy jumps. Rather, they tend to start, start with a jump, whether it's 5k, whether it's 10k, and then towards the end, they slightly bridge it out, but still fairly consistent. And additionally, if you looked at their Blacklist Miniatures line, this is one that they literally ran out of stretch goals. Meaning they didn't try to sit there, we could scroll down to this wall of numbers, they didn't try to sit there and say, you know what, we have to make the gap big we have to just make it further and, and escalate it out further rather they just said hey guys you killed it you absolutely killed this i mean this is five hundred twenty-five thousand dollars was the largest stretch goal and this campaign brought in 1.1 million now for any company out there paying attention what do you think is more fulfilling to your backers do you think having a stretched out goal in the last few minutes makes them feel like oh look we really have to edge towards that or do you think as a backer there's a feeling of reward there's a feeling of look what we did together when you hear from the creator, you guys crushed it, guys. We got nothing. We got nothing. You're all done. You look at look at the stuff you unlocked. It is what it is. This is as good as it could have done. Thank you so much for your support. Please keep backing. It means a lot to us. 
I think, at least being for myself, as a backer, as much as I love the stretch goal system, as much as I love the, the fun of unlocking stretch goals, I think having a point in time where everything is done and over and unlocked because you guys killed it is so much more rewarding than giving some artificial $400,000 gap on the last day of the campaign to make people feel better. Come on, I'm talking to you here, okay? Your backers... Make them feel like they really helped you get to the next level. And again, I love I love come on, I love come on games. I defend you guys all the time, but it doesn't mean you can't look at other companies to do better. So with that whole stretch goal thing out of the way, it really I love blacklist games in the sense that their stretch goals really do feel real. I don't know, like if you compare Hour of Need and the amount of content they unlocked, which unfortunately wasn't a lot because of you know the hundred twenty thousand, compared to Street Masters Aftershock, compared to the Blacklist Miniatures, compared to Alter Quest, I wonder what content they have that is just being saved for future expansions. I wonder whether there was more here or not. I don't know, and I I think that there wasn't. I mean, they stretched it out in the last, towards the end. Actually, I don't think they have. They, they have consistent 10k gaps the entire campaign for AltaQuest. That's a big, long tangent about stretch goals, but I believe Blacklist Games is doing stretch goals right. I believe they are doing their backers a service by having a set amount and then a firm endpoint, and it is what it is. Be a part of this experience or not. Every time I say stretch goals are a lie, stretch goals are fake, stretch goals are just a part of the game, the one company in the back of my mind that makes me rethink it is Blacklist Games. So kudos to you guys. That being said, whew, we got the retailer pledge over here where you can back a whole bunch of stuff. A gameplay overview. What else do we have here? I lost track of all the things I was going to say. Whole bunch of stuff. Anything from One Stop Co op Shop to Man vs. Meeple to Rado. A whole bunch of stuff. Tantrum House. Watch these things if you're on the fence. The miniature quality, great. The add ons. Let's go to the add ons. Okay. So we have the dice pack, which I got. We have a base wing pack, which I don't remember if I got because I remember I, I think I just take them off anyways. Uh, the neoprene board, which I didn't get. I like neoprene boards, but I don't appreciate storing them so I generally just don't bother getting them because it's too much of a hassle we have the stretch goal board mat we have the board mat bundle which I think did I get this I got one of these things I can't remember exactly what the first four hero packs which I got I love those heroes guys I just love more heroes and then the runes of Ark Inspire campaign box which I got all of that stuff so I don't think I got the, the play mats but I got the rest of that uh, in general neoprene mats tend to hold their value in terms of if the game does well these extra miniatures probably will and the base pledge we haven't talked about the base pledge will it hold its value should you back it? I think yes, speaking frankly. It's not a, a hard, firm answer, but I'm pretty sure yes. Street Masters is a well-loved game. Street Masters is a game that held its value, that has continued to hold its value. If you have a Kickstarter pledge of Street Masters and you're selling it below what you paid for it, you're doing yourself a disservice. Brook City is not as clear, but that is a theme that was harder to get behind. It's a theme that, and also is a less polished system in general, going back, and there's a little bit of a disconnect between the size of the miniatures, the size of the vehicles. Brook City had a bunch of small strikes against it, and all that said, I still think you can get your money back, just probably not much more, maybe you'll lose on shipping. But Alter Quest is the the highest funded Kickstarter by the Bla by the Sailor Brothers, by Blacklist Games. I think that unless the game tanks, unless it's horrible... I think it'll be a good back. I think you'll get your money back and more. Keep in mind, you have until July 22nd for anyone to get in on this. So you have to wait till after that, till no one else can get in on it, and then people want it. So when you get it, play it right away. See if it's for you. Because even if it's bad, it'll take time for that to filter out to all the people who kind of want it and it's too late. I am very confident that this is a game that will hold its value for sure initially, and I'm pretty sure it'll hold its value even down the road. I think that the Sailor Brothers have shown that they can do good games. It may not be the best game ever, but it's certainly not a game that will tank, and I hope that it will be a great game. I think it will be a throwback towards anyone who likes HeroQuest, but in a more modern system. This game does not have to knock it out of the park to be a success to hold its value. It just has to be pretty good, and I think that that's a safe bet. And I do hope it knocks it out of the park. In which case, for sure it'll hold this value. So yes, I do think this is a safe back. I will address one last thing before we jump into it, before we call it off, call, close the video, whatever. Which is, if you follow the Street Masters Aftershock campaign, and keep in mind, I was one of those backers, and I... Let's cover the drama first. So... The, the Street Masters Aftershock campaign has still not closed. It still has not closed, unfortunately. There are still people who don't have their game from that system. And that is something that, unfortunately, very strongly negatively affected Hour of Need. People were sitting there waiting months to get their game, and they still didn't have it. And I, again, I was one of those people. I didn't want to back Hour of Need until I figured out what's going on with a month-long, more than months, months-long delayed Kickstarter in terms of what was going on. And I don't mean regular delays. Regular delays, I'm kind of more on board with. I understand that. But when games have shipped 
and then that just kind of lost, which is what happened, that is harder to deal with. That is harder because that's, there's less of a precedent. A game just taking more time to design is common. We're all used to it. A game saying, hey guys, they're all gone now and, and we can't tell you where your copy is, is a much harder problem. I don't want to sit here and play too much of the drama, blame game, and whatnot. I will say there's been a lot of back and forth between what happened. Was it Blacklist the game's fault? Was it Black Box the fulfillment company? Black Box was acquired in that process. What I will say is, I believe Blacklist Games will make anything right and everything right to those few people who haven't gotten anything left. I do recommend watching this video. I'll put a link down to it. A heart to heart with Scotty. This is a great video that, again, Blacklist Games, if you see this, I think this was a great video. I think this should have been done months earlier. I understand your hands may have been tied because you don't want to... Nobody wants to sit there and slam another company. You want to sit there and play the game of everyone being friends because as soon as you sit there and try to say it's someone else's fault, it gets messy quickly. It just does. This is a public space. You don't want to be critical if you can avoid doing so. But this it's a very complicated situation. What I will say is Blacklist Games is standing behind the fulfillment. They have switching fulfillment companies. If you are backing Aftershock, uh, AlterQuest, it will not be the same fulfillment company. So in terms of the fulfillment company, if you believe it's their fault, then you don't have to worry about that. If you believe it's Blacklist Games' fault, I mean, time will tell. They're a small company. I get small companies. We're, you know, Board Game Co. is a team of like five people, five people in the warehouse right now, plus myself. It's small companies often are overwhelmed, overworked, and they're just trying to make it in this space. In no way does that mean you should ever give a small company a free pass on delivering you a product you paid for. That's reasonable. You, you bought something, you should get it. But it does mean you can treat them right along the way. It does mean you can treat them with respect. It does mean you can empathize or sympathize with the, 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 the troubles and the problems they're going through. I'm not giving anyone free passes. Not myself, not Board Game Co., not, not Blacklist, not anyone else. No one gets a free pass. But you can treat people like they're human beings and you can understand where they're coming from and you can be sympathetic to everything that is going on while you sit there and wait for a game to be delivered. I did get my Aftershock pledge in the end. I played it. I moved on. I did like it. I'm still excited for Alter Quest. Don't get me wrong. Do not get let the fact that I am get, I got rid of Street Masters in any way let you think that I am not excited for Alter Quest. I really, really am. But again, just, just understand, so the drama aspect, I, I think it's a safe, I'm not worried about the drama, put it that way. I'm not worried about what's going to happen in terms of the fulfillment in this, in this one, and I believe Blacklist Games will always stand behind their products. They seem like they're a stand-up crew, and I mean, let's be honest, they're, they're Canadian, so not them. Scott is, Scott's Canadian, and I love Canadians, I'm Canadian. Hi, Scott. That's basically it. That is Alter Quest. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this wasn't too much of a, you know, whatever, but you can late pledge this. In the comments down below, if you are, I did this on the, on the Bloodborne video, I did this, but if there are any Kickstarters that you want me to cover that have open late pledges, feel free to ping me, especially if they have a late pledge, because those ones, ones that have the ability to be bought, I will give those priority because you can actually make a decision based on watching the video, which seems better than just watching the video, right? So... Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. I will definitely give those priority. I only started this video, this whole channel, six months ago, and I only started doing, doing the Kickstarters like three or four months ago. So anything that I have not covered that has an open late pledge, I'll be doing that research myself, but open late pledges is not something I have been doing research until now. So in case I don't get to it first, ping me in the comments. I will add it to my list. I will be trying to do a once a week retrospect on these Kickstarters, at least until I get caught up or, or if I'm just too busy that week, or we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out together, you and I. From there, what else do we have here? So, our recommended video or recommended channel of the week because we're doing another Kickstarter look back is Shelf Clutter. Shelf Clutter is a channel that I have, I have mentioned in the comments before. They do, they, I mean, he basically gives you the week of Kickstarter in advance. So you should subscribe to his channel, plus he has a Reddit post. Just subscribe, he'll give you like, hey guys, here are the, you know, the, the Kickstarter, here's the week of X and I hear all the Kickstarters coming and he does a great job concisely delivering the information you will want. I subscribe, I watch his stuff, I have frequently added Kickstarters to my list of games to cover because they wasn't they weren't even on my radar at the end of the day there's too many kickstarters out there it's hard to keep up having a source that tells you what those are is very helpful and even myself who does this i still find his channel very helpful very useful he'll also occasionally do deep dives and those are worth watching as well i highly recommend subscribing to shelf clutter from there there'll be a poll in the comments down below i will slowly be moving my polls over to patreon by the way i should note i started a patreon channel link down below i'll slowly be moving those over once we have more of a, a crew there once we have more of a bunch of people and patrons there but for right now they'll still be here until we have more of an audience but 
In terms of the three videos to pick from this week, the first one is top 10 kids games for ages, I can't remember, ages eight and up, I believe. I did a top 10 kids games a while ago for ages five and up. For a, a long time now, I've been needing to do the next one. I just keep pushing it off. So if you want that top 10 kids, kids video, ages eight and up, you can vote for that in the poll. From there, I have getting games back because I never played them, which I did a video before on getting games back. And th the reason for that one was different. It was I had second thoughts or whatnot, but this would be a all the games that I can remember at least that I got back because I got rid of them having never played them and eventually wanted to get them back. I think that's very topical given the fact that I just got rid of a few games that I never played thanks to your guys' assistance. And finally, last on the list is the list for the poll is the one that was number two in last week's poll, which is finding the time to play more games. In general, finding time to play games is hard. Trust me, I know. I am, as soon as this video is done, I'm going upstairs to play two games of Pandemic Legacy. So I definitely am trying to make the time, but I'm also trying to balance that with, you know, a day job, board game co, these YouTube videos, you guys, comments, all that stuff. But like I said, two games of Pandemic Legacy right after this video. So if you want to figure out more, not figure out, if you want more tips or how I prioritize my gaming life to ensure that I get games to the table, Vote for that in the poll down below. As usual, anything that ever goes in the poll, unless it gets like no votes, eventually I'll do a video on it. It's not a question of if, it's just a question of when. You guys get to decide the when. The if you get to decide by having zero votes. If I have a topic that nobody votes for, well, I guess that really says all I need to say. Until next time, I am Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you've enjoyed this Kickstarter look back, uh, retrospect, why I backed it, whatever. Subscribe, comment. Again, Patreon link down below. Feel free to join that. No pressure. Or head on over to Board Game Co. and buy a few games. There are so many different ways you can support the channel. And honestly, just watching this video is one of them. Thank you so much. And until next time, have a good one.